Welcome to this week's End of Days Update coming to you from Effingham, Illinois. Man, we start tonight with the Effingham Camp Meeting. It's Ross Roberts Ministries with Joey Roberts, with Cindy Black, Scott Webb. We'll have a great time. There's so many meetings. There's three meetings in the morning, two meetings at night. You can get filled up. Man, this is the time to get all you can get. You want to stay full of the Word. So and if you're in Tulsa this weekend, we'll be at uh, World Outreach, our own home church there in Tulsa. Uh, we'll be there Sunday morning. We'll be having a great time. So come join us there if you're in the Tulsa area. It's fun to get to speak in Tulsa and, and, and be in my own home. So it's wonderful. So we're coming to you every week to look at the different things that point to the coming of the Lord, specifically the gathering of nations for the Ezekiel 38 war. As we know, every week we talk about it, the rapture is signless, but the second coming has tons of signs. And in our new book, uh, End Times Made Easy, it just came out the last few weeks, there's 70 some odd signs of the second coming in our generation. So we're so blessed that the Lord put so much information in the Bible to show us exactly what it would look like and then give us sign after sign after sign after sign so that we could tell how close we are. Why would He do that? So that we pick up the pace, we accelerate. This is not about an escape theology. This is a go for it theology on the last lap of a race. We, I've heard people say, Joe, why do you teach on end times? Well, tell a quarterback not to look at the play clock at the very end of the game. No, the plays are crucial. So while the clock is counting down, he, he makes adjustments. So we make adjustments now that we see that Jesus is just about to come back. Stuff happened this last week. We'll get into it. It's just remarkable setup for the Ezekiel 38 war. The literal main nations like Russia, Iran, and Turkey did things this week that literally show their true colors about the Ezekiel 38 war. So let's get in uh, all that's happened this last week uh, so that we can uh, act as accordingly. Remember, the tribe of Issachar had an understanding of the times to know what the children of Israel ought to do, indicating if you don't know what time it is, you won't know what you should do. So as we approach the coming of the Lord, it, we make changes. So uh, Jesus is coming so soon. So let's pick up with what happens around Israel this last week. Uh, you know, with Jerusalem Day, there was an anticipation of all kinds of chaos breaking out on the Temple Mount. I mean, Israelis got their flags out, did all kinds of celebration. Hamas did nothing. The Palestinians did nothing. Thought there would be massive uh, 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 trouble with that, but there wasn't. So that was intriguing. After that, this is pretty amazing. Israel keeps doing this every single week to keep Iran from literally annihilating Israel. So Israel uh, carried out a drone attack, a kamikaze suicide drone attack at the Parshan nuclear plant in Iran. Pretty amazing. They were quadcopter uh, drones, went right down in there and, and blew up such an area there. So uh, that's pretty radical. That's over the top. Just like Israel each week seems like they have to do Damascus uh, missile uh, batteries there. This week it was right in the nation of Iran itself. So Iran came back with showing off their underground drone supply. Pretty amazing how they put videos of all, didn't say where they were, but showed videos of all their drones trying to counteract what Israel had done. With that, Iran did a cyber attack in America this last couple of days of the Boston Children's Hospital. It just shows you where Iran's thought pattern is to go after our kids. I mean, kind of crazy. They, they say Israel's Satan and we're the great Satan. So no one talks about that. But there is a new pressure and a new building up pressure to go back to the talks because a, a think tank, an a, a Iranian think tank came out, a nuclear think tank came out this week saying Iran is literally three weeks to three months away from four crude nuclear weapons. Israel can't wait till that uh, kicks into gear because, man, one, one's all it takes to mess up Tel Aviv or Jerusalem. So uh, a lot riding on that. So with that, you had Turkey this week say, uh, again, they, they basically blackmailed NATO to go into Syria to cleanse the land of terrorists. Now, that the verbiage was identical of Russia going into the Ukraine to cleanse the land, and now Turkey's saying the same verbiage to cleanse the land. So two of the main players in the Ezekiel 38 war are doing exactly what the Bible said they would do, along with Iran. So I, I love other nations coming out publicly this week, pressuring Iran to back away from their nuclear program. So in the midst of that, you had China uh, sent 30 aircraft into Taiwanese airspace. Taiwan had to scramble their fighters to break that off. So you got China doing uh, symptoms of what they're going to do just before the second coming. You've got Russia 
Iran and Turkey doing symptoms of what they're going to do for the Ezekiel 38 war. So that tells us we're very close to the coming of the Lord. Uh, there, there's much more happening. I mean, you had the, the tomb of Jacob. Uh, the One of its markers were found this last week. It's an 1,800-year-old grave marker. So all these antiquities are coming out. You, you've got new activity with asteroids. So you've got nature. You've got crazy weather. You've got crazy asteroids. You've got earthquakes. And then you have all the natural things that you would see with all the armies. So we're a blessed generation. How, how amazing to be that group just before the author of life comes. So let's go back to the scripture. We do it every week. So much is happening around Israel. And really the, the big part about the settlements is getting to be, probably getting to be a real uh, problem so soon. But let's go to the Bible. We always go to this every week. What does it say? Number one, Israel made a nation. Number two, Jerusalem won back. Jesus said the generation sees those two events will not pass away to also fill. But then you got, you got the, uh, after that, you've got the Hebrew language restored. You got the Ethiopian Jews brought back. You got the fertility of the land of Israel. You got the revival of the Roman Empire. You have the uh, amazing thing of the Ethiopian Jews brought back in one day, 18,000. You have all these things. You have 172 different species of predatory birds show up on the land. You have foxes showing up on the Temple Mount, fish in the Dead Sea. Uh, the, t the ritual baths around the temple filling up with water. This one happened a couple of months ago in the Dead Sea, right where Sodom and Gomorrah was. The, the water turned blood red on the Day of Atonement. Absolutely crazy. So you have all these things. Rabbi Exakaduri prophesying there'd be, Israel would be ruled by two Benjamins just before the Messiah comes back. You have the Sanhedrin getting the oil of anointing ready twice uh, to, for the, to anoint the Most Holy, which is the Messiah. You had Russia rebuild the arch for Baal worship in Palmyra. That's where the Tower of Babel was. The Talmud says that's the last thing you'll see before the coming of the Messiah. And then you got signals, man. You had blood red moons on Passover and Tabernacles. A few years ago, as radical as that is, uh, NASA calls it a tetrad. When's the last time you had four blood red moons on Passover and Tabernacles? 1967, when Jerusalem was won back. 1948, when Israel's made a nation. And 1492, at the Edict of Expulsion, when the Jews were kicked out of Spain. That's remarkable. Then you had Bethlehem Star, Jupiter, Regulus, Venus. You had Regulus to retrograde motion, forms a crown over Jupiter. A king is born. That's what had happened at the birth of Jesus. Uh, the constellation was Virgo, born of a virgin. This last year, NBC Nightly News, so we have a celestial event, Jupiter, Regulus, Venus. Uh, the constellation was Leo. He's the lion of the tribe of Judah. Let me just tell you, my friend, he came the first time in humility. The second coming, he's coming back. Every knee will bow. Every tongue will confess that he's Lord to the glory of God the Father. So, man, exciting days. Order our new book at josephmorris.com. End Times Made Easy. There's charts and graphs in there that you can glance at the graphs and learn where we are in time. So see how easy it is to see how close we are. We made it as easy as possible to look at the signs, look at the graphs, to see where you are, why, so we can make changes. I had one guy say, Joe, if you talk about the coming of the Lord, you'll just get everybody's hopes up. That's exactly right. It's the hope that purifies us even as we are pure. We have a lot to do in a short period of time. Your strength will be tied to your joy. Paul said, I'm writing this to you so that you'll be happy and hopeful. The coming of the Lord is to get us happy and to get us hopeful because we're about to see the King. Wow, how blessed are we to all of a sudden see uh, the one who was and is and is to come the whole earth is full of His glory. Man, have a blessed week. We'll see you next Wednesday. We'll look at what's happened with the Iranian peace talks. We'll look at what's happened with the nuclear watchdogs, how they will put more pressure on Iran. Interesting, wonderful times right here before the King comes. Have a blessed, awesome week. We'll see you next Sunday. Thanks for joining us today at the End of Days Update. If you'd like to be notified every time there's a new post, just go to the edu at josephmorris.com and subscribe to receive email alerts. If these posts and updates have been a blessing to you, please consider making a one-time donation to help get the message out or even becoming a monthly partner with Joseph Morris Ministries. Thanks again for tuning in to the EDU, and we'll see you next week.